many friends will follow me. To all my friends, you gave me what you're doing. I want to be each one of you around the throne. Amen. Let's go each home. Oh, praise the Lord. Some sweet day. Father, I thank you, Father, for uh, Lord letting me feel well this morning. 
Uh, Father, I know I don't sound well, but I, I feel good this morning, and I thank you and praise Amen. you for that. Amen. And Father, I just pray that you'd strengthen my voice, yes. help me to be able to preach yes. and declare your word. Yes. And Father, if there's one that's here this morning, or maybe one that's watching the video this morning, that has never trusted thee as Lord and Savior, Father, I pray that you convict their heart of sin and judgment to come, and that you draw them to yourself, and that they be saved uh, today before it's eternally too late. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you for what you've done. We thank you and praise you for what you're going to do. For it's in Christ's name we do ask and pray these things. And amen. Amen. And notice here in chapter Romans chapter 12, verse number 1, uh, the Apostle Paul is writing here, and he tells us, I beseech you therefore, brethren. So we know that he's talking to saved people. Uh, he's talking to other brothers and sisters in Christ. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Notice here, now this is not a suggestion. This is a command that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice. And now he's uh, referring back to the Old Testament, if you will. Uh, in the Old Testament, if you remember, people had to bring animals to the priest to be offered and to be sacrificed for their sins. Uh, well, now Jesus Christ has paid the price of humanity's sin. He is the perfect sacrifice for sin. He is the only sacrifice for sin. And so now we are to offer ourselves or uh, uh, surrender ourselves, sacrifice our lives, and surrender our lives to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And notice here, the text tells us that you present your bodies. Uh, beloved, our bodies belong to the Lord. We have been bought with a price. Yes. We've been purchased by the blood yes. of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we are to surrender our lives, give up our lives to Jesus Christ after we get saved. And beloved, that is one of the most difficult things for a born again child of God to do is to surrender ourselves and give up ourselves. Uh, we're so used to doing what we want, when we want to, how we want to. But you got to remember now after our salvation that it's no longer about what I want or what you want, but it's about doing what He wants and accomplishing His will in our lives. And oftentimes, if not all the time, that goes against the flesh. Amen. That goes against our sinful flesh. And so the text tells us here that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. And beloved, we ought to offer our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought to be willing to sacrifice our lives and perform His will and not our will because of the love and the mercy that He's demonstrated for us. I hope everybody here this morning can testify and say this in their heart this morning that you love Jesus Christ with all your heart, all your soul, and all of your mind. Uh, beloved, Jesus Christ said this is the first and great commandment. And we can say that we love Him this morning Amen. because He first loved us. Amen. Uh, but uh, 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 because of His love and because of His mercy, amen, uh, that God commanded His love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. And aren't you thankful for the love of Christ and for the mercy of Christ that He has bestowed upon us this morning? I'm thankful that He loved me first, and I'm thankful for His mercy, because I know that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing, and I deserve God's judgment. I deserve God's hell, uh, 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 God's uh, punishing me and putting me into hell. I deserve that. But because of His love, because of His mercy, He gave His Son, Jesus Christ, to take my place and to take your place on the cross of Calvary. Uh, it's not home. Is it not working? Uh, okay, well, uh, you can hear me, but I've got, I've got a yellow light. And a yellow light means low battery. And so, uh, and so I'm going to turn this off and uh, 
uh, uh, I've got the batteries right here. And so, uh, uh, Chrissy, I'm going to let you change out the batteries and give these back to me. Uh, can you do it? Okay. Can you do it? Okay, all right. And so, I, I'm glad that you can hear me. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, 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 when that mic comes on, if my voice will reverberate all throughout the auditorium now. And so, I appreciate that. Jennifer pointed to, to, to my... Uh, the, the pocket tire, and I didn't know if I was slobbering or, or, or if it was the, uh, or if it was the, uh, the, the microphone. I wasn't even sure which one it was. And so anyway, I appreciate that, Jennifer, and we'll get uh, some new batteries in there and uh, get the mic going. But, you know, because of what Christ has done for us, uh, beloved, uh, we are to present ourselves to the Lord a living sacrifice because of His love and because of the mercy that He's extended to us. The Bible tells us in Psalm chapter 86, verse number 15, But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and plenteous in mercy and truth. Uh, beloved, as I mentioned earlier, I deserve hell. We deserve hell, but because of God's love, because of God's mercy, praise be to God, uh, Jesus took our place. He paid for our sin debt, amen. And uh, beloved, because of what He's done for us, then bless God, and then bless God, we ought to present our bodies a living sacrifice for His name's sake, amen. And then the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 4, but God, who is rich in mercy, for His great love wherewith He loved us. And then in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 3, Blessed be the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And the reason that we are uh, to present ourselves a living sacrifice and again begotten in us a lively hope is because Jesus Christ has conquered death and the grave. He is, he is risen. He is alive forevermore. And the hope that we have this morning as children of God, it is real, uh, beloved. Uh, uh, the, the life that we live for Jesus Christ, it is living. It is real this morning. Uh, he is sitting at the right hand side of the Father and making intercession for you and I. And beloved, what we have this morning is real and it ought to be real to our heart. It ought to be real to our soul. And beloved, we ought to take it serious this morning in giving our lives to Jesus Christ and surrendering our lives to the will of our Lord and our Father Jesus Christ this morning. Amen. Yes. And then Lamentations chapter 3 verse number 22 tells us, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. Uh, beloved, I mess up every day. I mess up every week. Uh, and beloved, uh, the reason uh, that I'm not consumed, the reason that God has not brought judgment into my life is because of His great mercy and His endless love is a godly love that He has for you and I this morning. Uh, I think we all can testify to the fact this week that we've messed up. We've came short into God's glory. Uh, we've, we've thought some things maybe we shouldn't have thought or said some things that we shouldn't have said. But thank God for His mercy. Amen. And that His compassions fail not. You know, uh, a lot of times I have found this uh, to be true in my own life, when man will not forgive you, God will forgive you. Amen. And I'm so thankful for God's forgiveness and for God's mercy. And so we offer ourselves, we offer our life to God because of His mercy and His love. And we're to offer ourselves to God as a living sacrifice. Uh, beloved, uh, 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 the fact of the matter is, when you get saved, you get a new nature. We're new creations in Christ. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And there's a warfare that takes place between our mind and the spirit that indwells in us. 
and her flesh. And it's a continual tug of war. Right. Uh, the spirit uh, is wanting to do right, uh, but her flesh is still wanting to continue to rebel right. against God. And so, uh, beloved, we must determine in our heart and in our mind yeah. that we're going to live for God and be all that we can be yeah. for His name's sake because of what He has done for us. And beloved, we want to reveal to others and show to others that we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And uh, beloved, we have to die to self. Uh, we have to crucify the flesh on a daily basis to accomplish this and our daily walk with Jesus Christ. In John chapter 3, verse number 30, the Word of God tells us, He, talking about Jesus Christ, He must increase, but I must decrease. We have to empty ourselves of ourselves and make room for Jesus Christ to come in and work in our lives and work through our lives that we can be the child of God that God wants us to be and that we'll be that faithful witness to tell others about Jesus Christ and that we'll perform the will of God in our lives so that when people see us they don't see the old sinner, the old man, they see the new man and they see Jesus Christ in our lives. And uh, beloved, that they can see Christ in us. And beloved, we're not, we're not saved by good works. We're not kept by good works. But beloved, our good works should be a result of the new birth. And these things are profitable unto others. And people can see Christ in us and desire to know more about Jesus and desire to draw closer to God and come to that point that they call upon the name of the Lord and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And so he must increase, but I must decrease. And let me tell you something. We have to crucify the flesh. We have to we have to make sacrifices ourselves. We have to sacrifice our time. We have to sacrifice our talent. We have to sacrifice our treasure. Uh, but beloved, these things that we're sacrificing, uh, beloved, are for His will and for an eternal purpose. And so the Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 5, verse number 24, and they that are Christ, do you belong to the Lord this morning? Amen. Are you a child of God? Has your name been written down in the Lamb's book of life? If you are, then you belong to Him. You belong to Christ this morning. What a wonderful truth we have. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. We are to die to self. We are to crucify our flesh and die to self daily. Uh, when we uh, we will want to tell that dirty joke, we have to crucify the flesh. When we want to give somebody a what for, and maybe use some vocabulary and vernacular that we all not, we have to crucify the flesh. Uh, we have to bring our flesh into some sub subjection and crucify our, fle our flesh on a daily basis. When somebody cuts you off at the drive-through or cut you off at the, on the interstate or cut you off uh, uh, at the checkout lane and you want to tell them a piece of your mind, sometimes you've got to crucify your flesh. Now, I know, I know some of us are wired just to let her rip, and uh, that's the way our flesh is sometimes. Uh, but, beloved, God doesn't get any glory out of that. It doesn't help the cause of Jesus Christ. And so we have to crucify our flesh and keep our flesh in subjection and in submission to the Spirit of God. Amen. And so the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. And so we have to guard our testimony, if you will, Thank God for salvation and that we're saved with an eternal salvation. And you can't misplace your salvation. You can't lose your salvation. 
No one can steal your salvation from you. But beloved, the next most important thing that you have as a child of God after your salvation is your testimony. Amen. And beloved, you can lose your testimony. You can get in the flesh. Right. You can pitch a hissy fit, as we say here in East Tennessee. Uh, you can give them white four. Uh, you can give them a piece of your mind. And beloved, we can lose our cool. And beloved, you can say things and you can do things uh, to try to get your point across, uh, to demonstrate your anger, uh, to show your frustration. And beloved, once you say those things, and once you do those things, and once they're out in the open, That's right. listen, you can apologize for them. You can realize after the heat of the moment, oh, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. But the fact of the matter is, once it's been said, once it's been done, you can ask for forgiveness. You can apologize. But what is done is done, and there's no taking it back. And even though people, people, uh, 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 will hear your apology. Uh, people will hear your request to ask for forgiveness. They may accept your apology. They may or may not forgive you. But one thing they'll always do will do is they'll remember what you said That's and true. what you done. That's the truth. And so be careful Amen. how you respond. Amen. Be careful how you react uh, because uh, let me tell you something. Thank God for the blood of Christ. Amen. And if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And thank God that God will forgive you, but that doesn't mean man's going to forgive you. And I know those that have carried unforgiveness and carried bitterness in their heart, and they will not forgive what somebody has said or done to them. And so be careful what you say. Be careful what you do. And guard your testimony. Amen. Amen. Guard your testimony. That's true. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 31, I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus, our Lord, I die daily. And the Apostle Paul is not talking about a bodily death. We are dying daily in our body of flesh. Every day that we live is a day closer we're going to step out into eternity. But he's talking about here, he's dying to his self, dying to his self-will, dying to what the lust of the flesh want to do. He's dying to those things daily so that he can live and perform the will of God in his life daily. And so notice here, the text tells us that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Notice here, holy. Notice how we're to offer ourselves unto the Lord. Yeah. Being holy. Amen. Being without, uh, uh, being without uh, charge. Being blameless in our life. Yes. Uh, we cannot be sinless, but we ought to try to aspire to be blameless and to be holy and to be lights in this world and to be salt in this earth. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, uh, beloved, uh, 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 there's not a lot of holiness preaching in our Baptist churches anymore. Uh, we've got to where we compromise the truth of God's Word and we become tolerant of sin. We become accepted of sin. Uh, beloved, uh, the fact of the matter is that we're a child of God. We are to be different from the world. We're not to be like the world. Uh, we're to we're to sound different, we're to look different, and we're to act different. And that's what verse 2 tells us. And be not conformed to this world. Too many churches today are trying to be like the world, uh, to win the world. But God tells us, as His children, we're to be different from the world. And it is because of that difference. People will look at us and they'll want to wonder why we're different and it's because we have Christ in us Amen. We're, we're new creatures in Christ Jesus and be not conformed to this world but be transformed 
Be different from the world. Don't sound like the world. Don't dress like the world. Don't talk like the world. Don't act like the world. You and I, as children of God, we are to be different. We're to be different. Remember that Andy Griffith episode when uh, 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 Opie was talking to Andy and he said his teacher uh, said he was acting peculiar, you know, uh, because he had a little bit of dirt behind his ears. He said, that's peculiar, and sent Opie home uh, to tell Andy about it. Well, beloved, you and I should be different. We should be peculiar when the, when the world looks at you and I. And the word peculiar, uh, when you read it in Scripture, literally means a people that has been set aside for a specific purpose, uh, beloved. And that's what God has done, is He uses His people and sets His people aside to accomplish His will in this world. And so, uh, beloved, we're to offer ourselves to God in holiness. In 1 Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. And if you call the Father, who without respect of persons, persons judges according to every man's word, past the time of your sojourning here in fear. God is not a respecter of persons, but He has called us to be holy because He is a holy God. He is a just God. He is a loving God. He is a merciful God. Uh, he is a gracious God. And so, beloved, we're to be holy because He is holy. And the Bible tells us in Titus chapter 2, verse number 14, talking about Jesus, who gave Himself for us that He might redeem us from all iniquity and purify to Himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Uh, beloved, our good works don't save us. Our good works don't keep us. But bless God, our good works come about as a result of the new birth. For we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. And so God tells us after we get saved, we ought to be about good works to show people that we've been saved, that we've been redeemed, and uh, people uh, need to see Christ in us. Amen. You need to see Christ in us. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 9, the Bible tells us, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of Him who hath called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. And even though the word repent is not used in this verse, the very definition of it is who hath called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. We were living in darkness. We were walking in darkness. But God has saved us and He's called us out of darkness. And we've repented from that. And we're no longer walking in darkness, but we're walking in light as He is light. And so we've repented. We've changed. And God has transformed and changed our lives. Glory to God. Amen. And so Psalm chapter 29, verse number 2 tells us, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto His name. You know, and people today, uh, I know that there's a lot of different ideas about worship. And let me tell you something. There's a lot of people out there that are worshiping God, but they're doing it their own way. They're doing it the world's way. They're doing it in the flesh. And because they're doing it, they feel like God is accepting it. But if you read the Word of God and you study the Word of God, God will accept our worship, but it has to be the way that God has commanded us to worship. And Jesus said, those that worship Him, notice the next word, must, must worship Him in spirit. 
not in all this fleshly hoopla that's going on out there today. Uh, that is a, a deception from the devil. But those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And notice here what the Word of God tells us. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto His name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The way that we worship God is to be transformed from the world. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. But beloved, we're to be different from the world. We're to be transformed and to be different from the world and worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, living a separated, sanctified life unto Jesus Christ, living a life that will glorify His name. And when people look at us, you know what? Since He got saved, He don't go to bars anymore. Since He got saved, He's been faithful to his wife. He's got rid of all of his girlfriends and boyfriends. I better throw that in there in today's age that we live in. Amen. Uh, he's, got, he's been faithful to his spouse. You know, he doesn't tell those dirty jokes anymore. You know, you know uh, uh, when, you, when you make him mad and you aggravate him about his team losing, he doesn't cuss anymore. Uh, I better move on. That's a sensitive topic this morning for some of us. Amen. <laughs> don't ask me why everybody's looking at you and don't hide behind JB. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, the reason being is worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Well, praise God. You know, I'm still a fan of this team. I still stand behind them even though they lost. And I'm not a fair weather fan. You know. And so, beloved, uh, uh, when, we, when we try to be holy like He is holy and walk in light as He in light, it glorifies His name and it glorifies what He's done for us, for us. And what it does is it draws others to the cross of Jesus Christ. When people can see Christ in us, amen. And so, He, we, uh, we still love Him. Even though Florida got spanked, and I mean spanked yesterday by Georgia, and Tennessee squeaked out one over over Kentucky, brother Troy. You know, we still we still love you this morning, brother. I don't I don't care I don't care if you pull for Georgia. I don't care if you pull for Alabama. Bless God if you're a child of the King, that's good enough. Amen. 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 And so, last of all, I notice here the text tells us that we present our bodies. You know, uh, the reason it says our bodies is because our bodies belong to the Lord. We've been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. And, the, and our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost that resides in us. The third part of the Trinity. Uh, so, beloved, uh, we're to present our bodies a living sacrifice. Too many of us, uh, too many of us today as Christians, we walk around with a frown on our face. We walk around depressed. We walk around defeated. We walk around discouraged. We walk around like this. Hey, we're to be lively. We've been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are a living sacrifice, Amen. not a dead sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Uh, we have hope in us. We've been saved. Our names have been written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Jesus has went to prepare a place for us. Hey, that's something to get excited about. Amen. I'm trying to get excited. I'm controlling that volume. Amen. I'm trying. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to pace myself this morning. But bless God, we got something to get excited about this morning as children of God. Uh, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. Let me tell you something. A lot of the worship that's going on out there today, just like in the book of Malachi, they were offering up the animal sacrifices, but you know God put, put specifications and requirements upon those, upon those sacrifices. Uh, they, they couldn't have a blemish. Uh, they, had, uh, they had to have this and they had to have that. 
But you know, the, the priest in the Old Testament, they got in the flesh and they said, you know what? Those perfect sacrifices, they'll bring, they'll bring $5 at the market. But these have got blemishes and spots on them. And these that are sickly and weak, they won't bring as much. And so you know what? We'll take the ones that got spots and got blemishes and the ones that, that God told us not to command, we'll sacrifice those. And we'll take the good ones down to the market. And we'll, we'll, we'll get a full dollar's worth out of them. And we'll make the profit on it. And the Bible tells us in the book of Malachi that even though they went through and they sacrificed the animals, and they went through the routine and the ritual of making the sacrifice, God did not accept it because it wasn't what God asked for. It wasn't the right time of sacrifice. And there's a lot of people out there today, a lot of churches out there today, yeah. where we're doing this, yeah. we're doing this for worship, we're doing that for worship. <clears throat> All that's catering to is the flesh. Yeah. But just because they're offering it, and because they're doing it doesn't always mean God's going to accept it. And that's the part that a lot of people miss in Scripture. And that's why Jesus said, those that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. The Bible tells us just a few pages over in Romans chapter 14, verses 17 through 19. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that in these things serveth, serveth Christ is acceptable to God. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, the way that we live, the way that we worship, and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. It is spiritual worship. The Bible says in verse 18, For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and the things wherewith one may edify another. God said, I'll accept it if you do it my way, if you do it God's way. Hebrews chapter 13 Verses 15 and 16 tells us, but let him off, uh, let us off, but let him, but him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Amen. When the right things come out of our lips, God said, I, I'll accept that. I'll bless that. Notice here in 1 Peter, chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Notice what else God accepts. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, put these things aside as newborn babes Desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If so be you have tasted that the Lord is gracious to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, you also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Christ Jesus. To offer up spiritual sacrifices. To worship the Lord in spiritual truth. Amen. God said, I'll be pleased with that. And then notice another sacrifice that God tells us that He's pleased with. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. It's the way that we pray and how we pray. Notice this in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, 
intercessions, and giving the thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, Amen. our Savior. When we pray for other men, when we, when we pray for those that are in position of authority, we may, we may disagree with their policy. We may not go along with their policy. But we still pray for their soul and that God will save their soul. God said, you know what? I will accept that prayer. I will hear that prayer. That's acceptable unto me. And listen, there's a lot of things that happen on Capitol Hill and a lot of things that take place in Washington, D.C. that I personally disagree with. I don't, I don't support the policies. I don't support the beliefs. But I do pray for the individual. Amen. That they'll get their heart right with God. Amen. That they'll get saved. Yeah. Because guess what will happen? Yeah. If their heart gets changed, change and, and their heart gets saved, yeah. their beliefs and their policies will get changed. You see? Amen. And so, uh, beloved, if we do those things, the Bible says that if we be Tra transform from this world or be not conformed to this world but transform in our mind we can experience renewal but beloved the way that we experience renewal is we've got to do it God's way we've got to we've got to do it God's way I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God, which, you're, which is your reasonable service. And when we do it God's way, guess what? We'll experience renewal and revival in our mind. And we can draw closer to God and continue to serve God. Amen? And so that's all my voice has for you this morning. Amen? That's all I have for us this morning. And so at this time, I'd like to invite you to stand. Everyone, everyone standing. Everyone's standing, everyone's heads bowed, everyone's eyes closed. As a musician,